Hello everyone! I hope we're having a good day so far. So this week we are going to be talking about phase changes and we're going to go through some notes about phase changes. This is a good opportunity to take some notes in your notebook and practice our note taking skills. So some background information. Last week we started using a vocab word kind of um, in reference to things called substance. So just to kind of pin down what that means more clearly, substance is the general term for any form of matter. So a substance can be a liquid, it can be a solid, it could be a gas. So for example, when we were referencing that density column, if you can remember all the way back to that video where the guy layered everything, we talked about what substance is the most dense or what substance is the least dense. That could have been either one of the liquid layers or a solid layer. So it can um, qualify for all of those things. So another thing we talked about was physical properties. So density is one physical property we mentioned in our day one of density. But what is a physical property? It is an observable or measurable characteristic of a substance. So when we think of those substances, what is what defines it? What is something that is observable or measurable that we can use to define or um, identify that substance? But the trick is it can be seen without changing the substance. So it's not like we're going to put it through some chemical um, reaction or something like that. We're not going to change the substance. It's just a physical property that can be seen or observed or measured without changing it. So this might include color, density, that, like we talked about, mass, and volume, like we also talked about. But it's going to include other things that we're going to talk about this week, like melting point and etc. So changes in matter. Phase change, or changes in the state of our substances, are physical changes. That means that it changes how the substance looks physically but it doesn't change its chemical makeup. So it's the, still the same substance. So when water goes from ice to liquid water to water vapor, like gas form, it's not chemically changing. It's still water. It's just the look of it is changing, right? It's changing through those physical properties. So substance have specific temperatures at which it changes. So once again, using our water example, Water freezes at a specific temperature and it boils at a specific temperature and this is a physical property of substance. So like each substance, like whether it be um, water, whether it be iron, whether it be, um, what's something else, like helium or any of like elements like things, they all have a specific temperature at which they change into their different forms. So that, once again, that's a physical property of a substance. So phase changes in energy. So heat energy is always involved in the phase change. And that isn't just like adding heat, because it can be gaining heat, something can be gaining heat, but it also can be losing that heat energy in order to phase change. But whether it's gaining energy or losing energy, we'll kind of... Um, be will define what is happening in that situation. So when we move from gas to liquid to solid or solid to liquid to gas, we're either gaining or losing energy, but that is kind of defining what is happening. So when something gains heat energy, some things we might see are melting, vaporization, or sublimation. When we add heat energy, molecules are going to be moving around more. We're putting more energy in, and our molecules are going to move around much more quickly. Whereas if something loses heat energy, it might be freezing or having condensation or deposition of something like that. So when we lose energy from a substance, those molecules kind of slow down. Maybe like you when you run out of energy and you start to slow down before you go to sleep. We can measure that sort of heat energy gain and loss through something like a thermometer 
which measures the amount of heat energy in a substance. Like if we have boiling water, we can throw a thermometer in it and we can read the amount of energy or um, the temperature in a substance like water. So when we'll look at we'll look at it a little bit more closely. So when a substance gains energy, we said something like melting might occur. This is when solid goes to liquid. It's probably something we're all fairly familiar with, right? We have all had a glass of water or a glass of soda with some ice in it and it slowly melts into nothing. Melting is that solid, like our solid ice cube going to liquid, liquid water. Vaporization might be another, um, or might be a word that is less familiar, but vaporization and evaporation kind of go hand, are, are very similar in that they are both liquid to gas phase. So like boiling water is vaporization. So we're pushing it from that liquid phase into that gas stage. So we're turning like boiling water into water vapor. The difference between vaporization, between our vaporization here and our evaporation, is that evaporation does not require like boiling. So like if we put a glass of water out on our front porch, right, or our front step or out, outside somewhere, or even in our kitchen, it will eventually evaporate. So we don't have to like add extra energy and heat like on our stove to it in order for it to evaporate. It's going to use the heat, and ener the heat energy from the environment to evaporate and switch into that other stage from liquid to gas. Another word we might not be as familiar with is sublimation. It's when a solid, it's another, uh, or it's when a solid goes to a gas. So it doesn't even go through that liquid state. It kind of like skips over it. This is kind of a fancy science term that maybe someday if you continue on with your science education is something you'll do in a science lab someday. But it's going from that solid to gas phase without even hitting that middle liquid stage. In contrast, we have when a substance loses energy, we have something occurring like freezing, which I think we're also more familiar with when we have some water, put it in an ice cube tray, put it in the freezer, we're turning our liquid water to solid. So all substances can kind of do this. They can go from their liquid stage and they lose that energy into their solid phase. Condensation is another thing that we probably see quite often. If we take a shower, our, our mirror kind of fogs up. That's because the that gas, that liquid vape, or that um, vapor, water vapor, thank you, sorry, that water vapor in the air kind of cools on our shower mirror, or like on our mirror, and it goes from that liquid, all right, sorry, it goes from that water vapor, which is a gas, to a liquid that runs down our windows or runs down our mirror. So condensation is going from that gas stage to the liquid stage. Another one is deposition, so gas to solid. It does not go through the liquid stage, so like frost, it goes from that gas stage straight to the ice stage on our leaves, like right here. So that is all I have for today, um, for this presentation, sorry. Um, you, now that you've taken notes, you'll work on the next stage of our agenda. So let me know if you have any questions with that.